What's going on everybody? Kalipas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be comparing the Samsung Galaxy A13 4G to the Samsung Galaxy A03s. Now before we go any further, I just want to clarify, the Samsung Galaxy A13 4G is a completely different phone from the Samsung Galaxy A13 5G that I have also covered quite a bit on the channel. The A13 5G was released in December of 2021, whereas this phone, the Samsung Galaxy A13 4G, was released just last month in March of 2022. So again, completely different phones here. It can be a little confusing, but I just wanted to make that clear. But with that being said, let's get started. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A13, we're getting a 6.6 inch PLS LCD display with a resolution of 1080p, a PPI of 400, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of about 83.2%. So definitely a real nice quality display, really good size, just a tiny bit over average. I want to say the average display of a modern smartphone nowadays is around 6.5 inches, so while definitely still being within the realm of average, the display of the Samsung Galaxy A13 is just a tiny bit larger, and with the 1080p display, that actually is pretty unusual for such a low-end phone, because this is really an entry-level phone, and most phones in this price range only have 720p displays, but with this phone we are getting 1080p, so if you're doing any kind of content consumption, whether you're streaming videos, looking at photos, Photos, playing games, whatever, you're going to get a much better experience with this phone. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A03s, we're getting a 6.5 inch PLS LCD display with a resolution of 720p, a PPI of 270, an aspect ratio of 20 by 9, and a screen to body ratio of about 81.8%. So these displays are pretty similar for the most part. The only real difference here is the resolution. Other than that, they have pretty much the same size, although the A13 is a little bit bigger. They also both have the same display technology. And in general, the colors look nice and bold on both of these displays. And the brightness and viewing angles are really good as well. But again, I would say the A13 does have an advantage here, being that it has a 1080p display versus 720p. So the image on the Samsung Galaxy A13 overall is going to be a little bit sharper and crisper. So if you are going to be consuming a lot of content, this is definitely something to think about. Now with the Samsung Galaxy A13, we're getting 64 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion. And with the A03s, we're getting 32 gigabytes of internal storage with micro SD card expansion as well. So when it comes to storage between the two, the Samsung Galaxy A13 definitely has an advantage here with double the internal storage. Yes, both of them do have micro SD card expansion, but having more internal storage on the phone itself is usually a little bit better if you can get it, because nowadays with the system, apps, and pretty much everything in general taking up more and more space as time goes on, it's better to have more storage than you think you need. And while you can still offload stuff like photos and videos to micro SD cards, it's always nice to have the option to keep more stuff on the phone itself. Usually it ends up being a lot more convenient. And even for the average user, even if you're not a power user with a bunch of apps, you're probably gonna go through 32 gigabytes pretty quickly. So with 64 gigabytes that we're getting with the A13, while you can still do better, especially if you're a power user, for an entry level phone like this, it's really not bad and certainly much better than the 32 gigabytes we're getting with the Samsung Galaxy A03s. Now there's no wireless charging with either of these phones. That's probably not very surprising, but both of them do have fingerprint scanners right here on the power keys. Definitely a nice spot for a fingerprint scanner. Since you're probably going to be pressing this button to wake up the display anyway, you might as well be able to unlock it at the same time. In addition to this, both phones also have face unlock, giving us two different options to get into them. But starting with the Samsung Galaxy A13, let's go ahead and give these fingerprint scanners a try and see how well they work. There we go, one more time. And there we go. Real fast and responsive, no issues here. Now moving on to the A03s. There we go, one more time. And there we go. So both of these fingerprint scanners are real fast and responsive. No issues here. And remember, both phones also have face unlock if you prefer to use that instead. Now taking a look at the camera setups here, with the Samsung Galaxy A13, we got a water drop notch here for the front facing camera, and this camera is 8 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a quad camera setup with a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. For the A03s, we got a water drop notch as well for the front facing camera, and this camera is 5 megapixels. Then on the back, we got a triple camera setup with a 13 megapixel main camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So both phones have pretty decent camera setups, but between the two, the Samsung Galaxy A13 definitely has an advantage here, 
First of all, it has more features. So if you're taking lots of photos and you want a wider variety of features, maybe you want to get close up detailed images like you can with a macro camera, but you also want to get pictures of stuff like scenery, maybe a skyline photo, something like that, then having both a macro camera and an ultra wide camera like we get with the A13 definitely has a huge advantage. The AZ-R3S doesn't really have a bad setup per se. You can use portrait mode and it does have a macro camera so you can get close up detailed images, but it doesn't have an ultra wide camera, whereas the A13 does. So again, if you want more camera features, the A13 will have an advantage. And when it comes to the camera setup, the quality is another place where the A13 does have an advantage. Sure, you can take some pretty decent photos with the AZ-R3S. In fact, compared to a lot of other phones in this price range, the Samsung Galaxy AZ-R3S is actually pretty up there in terms of quality. But that being said, between the two, the Samsung Galaxy A13 is quite a bit better, so if you're taking lots of photos you want to keep for something, then the Samsung Galaxy A13 is probably going to be a better choice overall. Now internally, with the Samsung Galaxy A13, we're getting 4GB of RAM with the Samsung Exynos 850 processor. And with the Samsung Galaxy A03s, we're getting 3GB of RAM with the MediaTek Helio P35 processor. Now I ran Geekbench 5 benchmark tests on both of these phones, and with the Samsung Galaxy A13, we're getting a single core score of 157 and a multi-core score of 588. With the Samsung Galaxy A03s, we're getting a single core score of 174 and a multi-core score of 888. Now this is actually the first place in this comparison so far where the Samsung Galaxy A03s actually has an advantage because as you can see here, the A03s is actually quite a bit faster than the A13. It definitely will make quite a noticeable difference. So if you're doing normal activities like browsing the web, going on social media, streaming videos, stuff like that, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A03s might be a better choice here because it does have significantly more processing power and that obviously means it's gonna be quite a bit faster. With the Samsung Samsung Galaxy A13, to be perfectly honest, this phone really isn't very fast at all. It still will handle the basics pretty well, so if you're browsing the web, going on social media, streaming a few videos here and there, that kind of stuff is going to be perfectly fine with this phone, but between the two, if you're going to be using your phone heavily, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A03s is going to hold up a little bit better, but for more moderate use, the Samsung Galaxy A13 will get the job done. Now these phones both have 5,000 milliamp hour batteries that support 15 watt fast charging, so definitely really good there. If you're looking for a phone with a ton of battery life both throughout the day and down the road in terms of longevity, then you won't go wrong with either of these phones. In addition to this, the fast charging also helps a little bit because if you do have a fast charger, the 15 watt fast charging both of these phones support is going to help charge up your phone a little bit faster and that might save you a bit of time. Now another thing to be aware of is that the Samsung Galaxy A13 does have NFC, but the Samsung Galaxy A03s does not. Now in case you don't know what it is, NFC is the main technology behind contactless mobile payment services like Google Pay, so if you do like to use those tap and pay features, then the Samsung Galaxy A13 will be able to do that for you, but with the Samsung Galaxy A03s, unfortunately you can't. But in conclusion, which of these phones is better? In general, I would say the Samsung Galaxy A13 is going to be the better device here. It has a better display with a higher resolution, so when you're consuming content, whether you're streaming videos, viewing photos, playing games, no matter what the case may be, the Samsung Galaxy A13 is going to have a sharper and more crisp image, so it's going to give you a better experience overall. It also has double the internal storage, which in this day and age is always a good thing to have. The A13 also has an ultra-wide camera for the camera setup, and just better quality photos in general. And again, this phone does have NFC, whereas with the Samsung Galaxy A03s, since it doesn't have NFC, you can't use that feature. Now, all that being said, although I do think the Samsung Galaxy A13 has most of the advantages here, the A03s does have the advantage in being a little bit faster as far as power goes. So if you're not too concerned with features, maybe you're just using your phone for basic activities, like going on social media, browsing the web, doing stuff like that, and you're not really planning on taking a bunch of photos or consuming a lot of content, and you really just want an entry-level phone that's fast enough to handle heavy use doing more basic activities, then the Samsung Galaxy A03s with a faster processor might be a better choice in that situation. But again, if you can handle having a little less processing power, then I do think the Samsung Galaxy A13 in general is a better phone. Now if you want to learn more about either of these phones individually, be sure to check out my full reviews and tips and tricks videos for them on the channel. But I hope you enjoyed this comparison, and I hope you found this information useful as well. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button, but as always, I will see you in the next video.